everyone, and welcome back to the Weekend Your Way Culinary Video Resources. Today we'll be talking about soups, the different kinds, how to classify them, and how soups can be an excellent menu option for your businesses. First, let's start on classification. There are three main types of soups. Clear, such as consomme. Thick, such as cream with mushroom or butternut squash soups. And specialty, such as mulligatawny soup. Most soups will fit into one of these categories, but can sometimes be found in two. Let's dive in. First, we'll talk about clear soups. These soups are broth or stock-based, with an emphasis on the presentation of the ingredients. They're generally very light-tasting soups, but still very delicious, and are a great complement to other stronger-tasting items on your menu. A well-made clear soup will have a broth that isn't cloudy and very nicely cut vegetables or other ingredients, which you can see very clearly. Some examples of clear soups are consomme, chicken noodle soup, or vegetable soup. Pictured on the right, you can see a really nice type of wonton soup where the broth is crystal clear and the noodles inside are identical and deliberately placed. A great clear soup is difficult to master, but extremely impressive on a menu. Next, we have thick soups, which is a very broad category. A thick soup is one that has been thickened by some sort of thickening agent, including roux, starch, cream, or even one of the mother sauces. A well-made thick soup base is generally smooth with a very even texture. There are four notable groups within the thick soup category. Cream-based soups, pureed soups, bisques, and chowders. Cream soups are simply soups thickened with cream. They are usually very rich soups, which you most commonly see featured on winter or fall menus. You can always tell a cream soup by its name. They very often start with cream of. For example, cream of mushroom or cream of broccoli soup. Pureed soups usually have a starchy vegetable in them, such as potato, sweet potato, carrots, or beans. The creaminess of this soup relies on the starch in these vegetables to thicken the soup, giving it its smooth texture. These soups are always blended, so you'll rarely have any chunks of ingredients in a spoonful, unless it's as a garnish. The best pureed soups have a very creamy mouthfeel, even though they don't have any cream in them. This is a great option to have on a vegetarian or vegan menu, as the starch in your vegetables will do all the work for you. Some examples include butternut squash soup, carrot soup, or black bean soup. Next, we have bisque. You don't see these soups on menus very often because they can be expensive to make and are quite time consuming, but a bisque is one of the nicest, richest soups you can get. Usually seafood based, you can identify a bisque by its bright orange color. Most bisques are either lobster or shrimp based. However, sometimes crab and crayfish are used. These soups are usually thickened with cream, but sometimes chefs will blend the soup with cooked rice to thicken them. To make a bisque, you must roast or fry the shells of seafood to bring out its delicate flavor and beautiful orange color. Then use those shells with a mirepoix and sometimes white wine to make a very flavorful stock. This stock will then be blended with whatever you choose to thicken your bisque with and served garnished with the meat of the shellfish. Yummy. And finally, we have chowders. Similar to the bisque, chowders are very rich soups that contain fish, clams, or corn with potatoes and onion. Unlike a bisque, this creamy type of soup will have chunks of vegetables and seafood throughout, not just as a garnish. A chowder will always be thickened with potatoes, flavored with onions, and they usually contain some milk or cream to give it its classic flavors and textures. You can always differentiate a bisque from a chowder by what is on your spoon when you take a bite. Bisques never have chunks throughout, while a chowder will always have a little cube of vegetables, potatoes, or seafoods. And last of our categories, specialty soups. These are soups that don't necessarily fit into the clear or thick categories, either because the techniques needed to make them or if the ingredients are specific to a region in the world. Specialty soups sometimes even have their region in their name, such as French onion soup or Italian wedding soup. But soups such as mulligatawny or pozole, as seen in the pictures on the right, are still specialty soups, even though they don't have their specific region in their names. These soups are great if you're planning to open a restaurant with a specific cuisine to a region in the world. So why should you put a soup on your menu? Lots of reasons. 
Soups are very cost effective, especially if you plan to use leftover ingredients from other things you have on your menus, which can be a big help for your food costs while also reducing food waste. Soups can also be easily frozen, which is great if you plan to serve takeout or meals meant to be reheated at your customer's home. Also, making a big batch of soup from scratch and freezing it will extend how long you can serve your soup for. Instead of keeping it in the fridge or keeping it hot during service, freezing your soup allows you to have exactly how much soup you need every day for your customers, while also making sure less of it goes to waste if it's been out for too long. Soups are also very time effective. Once you've made your soup and it's nice and warm, it only takes a minute to portion it into a bowl, add your garnishes, and serve it quickly to your customers. But on top of all of that, soup is delicious. Now, what happens if your soup doesn't follow these rules? Absolutely nothing. This video is just to give you some inspiration on different types of soups you can add to your menu while getting creative with your business. Try using local ingredients or ingredients that you grew up with and trying some of the techniques you see with other classic soups. The possibilities are endless and soup is a fantastic way to show off your culture's classic cuisines. And as always, thank you for watching!